Okay. All right. It says we're live here, baby. Oh, my God. How's everyone doing? Shout out to everyone who's watching and waiting. Sorry I'm a minute late. Once again, I'm using this, this, uh, this new mic that I bought that I think makes literally zero difference, right? Kind of like when you, when you go to the doctor, you spend $2,000 and the doctor doesn't do jack shit for you, right? That's what this mic is like. You go to the doctor's office, I just spent $2,000. I'm exactly the same as I went in there. I just spent 30 bucks on this microphone. The audio seems to be exactly the same as it was before I bought it. But as long as everyone can hear me, that's fine. Maybe I'll get a, a better one later. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult doctors like that. You know, so, but you know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. Most of the time you do a little research, your friend does a little research for you. You're pretty much knowing whatever the hell the doctor, usually you're, be you're better off than the doctor. You know what I mean? Doctors are like fucking uh, hedge fund managers or, or, or touts. It's like, like, not only are they not better than you, they're not even as good as you. But, you know, you're looking for a freaking expert. And you find some guy who's, like, worse than you, claiming he's an expert. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, shout out to everyone. All right, now I says I can hear you fine. All right, that was just a, a little bit of rant there. I'm a little bit tense right now because December went really well in this show. I was hoping that I would have, like, a ROI of, like, 3%, 4%, and uh, everything would be fine. Some people would say, like, you know, there'd be a good job, Pete, nice job, Pete, and the show would be justified. But I did way better than I was uh, hoping to, expecting to, and all of that. And now we got January coming up. Long-term viewers of mine know that in college basketball, February is always my best month. I kill it in college basketball traditionally. Uh, March is also always usually pretty good, but January is dicey. This year, I'm going to try as hard as I can to have a profitable January. I'm going to change some things up. I'm going to do some things a little bit differently. But, uh, you know, I, what can I say? Who knows? Maybe this year, January will be awesome. February will be terrible. But, you know, now now I got something to lose. You know, when you ain't got nothing, you got nothing to lose. But now I got something to lose because I got this, this, this record that's been amazing in December. And shout out to everyone who tunes in and gives me love on Twitter and all that stuff. All right, enough bullshitting. Oh, fuck, I forgot. Yeah. What am I bullshitting about here? There's a fucking halftime line. I'm sorry. I hope we didn't miss it. I don't think we did. Let's get to it right now, and then we'll get to some bullshitting around. So I didn't even get to any uh, any any comments there. I just spent four minutes talking about nothing. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's look at this uh, at this uh, Xavier game because it is interesting. I was liking the under. I didn't even check. Oh, yep. The uh, first half is very low scoring. Again, I might do a Patreon very soon. My my my. Boss and associate here at my new job is pressuring me to do that. Uh, so I might do that. And if I do, you know, I'll put out the link. You're all welcome to sign up. It'll basically be not necessarily me giving you picks, but me sharing with you what my bets were. Subtle difference there, right? Uh, but I can tell you that one of my bets was, uh, was, the, was the under on Xavier Villanova and the first half under. First half under cash and the full game under cash as well. All right, let's look at these second half lines. See, that's a play. Yeah. See now, all right, I'm looking at this one right here, right now. Uh, yeah. Xavier, obviously tough defensively. This is probably going to be a pass. Pre-game lines like Xavier, halftime, I mean, pre-game numbers that I look at like Xavier, halftime numbers that I look at like Villanova. And uh, regular viewers of the show now know that what I do is, you know, I got two ways of looking at these numbers. I like it when they go the same way, and that's almost always a bet. It doesn't always win, but it's almost always a bet. When one is pushing one way and the other one is is mostly neutral, then it's usually a bet, although I'll throw in some artistry in there. When they're going in opposite directions, sometimes I'll take one because I'll say one is much stronger than the other. <sighs> In this one, the halftime uh, numbers, yeah, I got to pass on this one. But this is a game, again, I had the under, I had the uh, the uh, the uh, the full game under. And as far as the uh, second half total is concerned, that's a pass, both full game and halftime. So can't give a can't give a halftime play on this one. But if I've been doing what my boss is telling me to do, and uh, – and starting a Patreon where I'm sharing my uh, my, my my opinions and analysis of uh, of college basketball. Then when it gets to MLB, that'll be different. Last year I had a, a very good MLB season 
and who knows what's going to happen this year, but why not assume that I'll do almost as well this year? I would have given out under on uh, on this one, Xavier and uh, and Villanova. But halftime lines here, again, I would love – this one did kind of have halftime written all over it. Uh, regular viewers of these shows know that, uh, you know, some of these games – a lot. I would say about half of the games in general – uh, have quote unquote halftime written all over it to me uh, before they before they go off, and this was one of them. Didn't have halftime written all over it, but halftime sketched out in various parts of it. So, but right now, again, the pregame numbers like Xavier, the halftime numbers like Villanova, and neither one likes both say pass on the total of seventy four. All right. Let's not look at it any longer. Sorry about that. Sorry, I can't disappoint you with a play in the first two seconds. All right, let's look at some comments. At about 7.38, I'm going to start looking at, at the games because, once again, we have 17 games coming up. There's probably going to be some, some nice edges, but some of them I'm going to be anticipating, you know, edges or possible edges more than others with about 10 minutes before halftime. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to do. Uh, yes. All right. So now we can now we can uh, now we can talk a little bit and do some shout outs for about 10 or 13 minutes. And then I want to start looking at uh, anticipating because with 17 games, uh, you know, when, when I, I got it's like every second matters. So uh, so let's look at some comments here. Justin Casey. Hey, Pete. Nice to see you again. Looking forward to this. Shout out to you, Justin Casey. Thank you very much. Things are going to start to things are pretty chilled in December. We made a lot of jokes. We made some jokes. We talked about you know, betting theory here and there. We told some stories here and there. Talked about some other sports here and there, a little NFL here and there. But now you know what it's like when uh, when, the, when 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 conference play kicks into gear. It's just intensity until mid March. Intensity until the Sweet Sixteen. That's the way it goes. Uh, so I don't know what what the future will bring, but there we go. Sean B says, Pete, love the show. Lecce, thank you very much. As you guys can tell, the intensity is picking up. Looking at some other comments coming in, and then we'll we'll start to I'll start to look at some of the. Well, I'll share with you some of the later games that that, that I liked. Uh, I can't even remember when the Columbia Albany game was going off, but that I like the under on that one. That was one of my plays. Richard Brewer, is this the live game? No, it is not. Richard Brewer, this is a, a live show where we give out uh, uh, second half betting analysis. Uh, and, and, you know, I was expecting it to be profitable so far. It's been quite profitable, almost 20% ROI, a sample size of almost a hundred games, hundred picks. So might want to stick around Richard Brewer. What up to you? Sharp money. Shout out to you. Um, Lamont Williams. Shout out to Lamont Williams. Shout out to Lamont Williams. Uh, let's see. Big Ragu is in here. Shout out Big Ragu. Perfect rotation. Perfect rotation. Did Pete sniff a line here? No, no. I did not. I do not do anything except for coffee. And uh, let's see. What else do we have here? And headache medications. Uh, all right. I can hear you fine. There you go. Hey, Pete, it's Chris Capper. Shout out to you, Chris Temple. Nello I, Jesse Nemeth. Shout out to you. We few, we happy few. Jay Mills, happy new year, Pete. Great to see you back on tube. Still killing it, I see. Yeah, for the time being, you know, this stuff can change on a dime, change in a heartbeat. Dan Kelly, Pete, have you been working out? No, good eye, Dan Kelly. No, but we have been uh, shooting up some cc's of dihydroboldenone. Okay, dihydroboldenone. Now I know you can uh, get kicked off of YouTube for for saying that. Uh, you know, I'm giving you now advice that you should do. No, I'm giving you advice. No, I'm kidding. It's just a joke. This is a joke. Dihydroboldenone. Stacked it with a little uh, synthol, stacked it with a little HGH, stacked it with a little trenbolone, right? That's what you're seeing, Dan Kelly. Haven't had time to work out yet, but I've been injecting it. I've been injecting a few CCs here and there, and here and there, and there and there and there. You know, yeah, once in a while, a couple times a week. Dihydroboldenone. Oh man, I'm tense. You know. I believe in my uh, strategies here. I believe in what I've been doing. That's why I started this show. That's why I did this because I had an I had a, a strategy that I thought would work, and it worked in my testing the first few weeks of the season, and then it worked even better after I started this show. Uh, but it could go south any moment, and then I'm you know there's no explanations. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I thought I was going to do well, and I didn't. I don't know what happened. So that's why I'm tense. We'll see how it goes. All right. We got 17 games coming up. 
let me uh, let me just quickly go over some of the games that are coming up later, and then uh, tell you you know some of the uh, some of the shit that I uh, that I already hit. Uh, let me uh, let me just pull up the pull up everything. Got to get ready. All right. NCAAB clicking a lot of spreadsheets and all this crap. Programs. Hey, I, you got AI all over the place on my fucking screen. No, I'm kidding. I don't have any AI here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So DePaul and Seton Hall is very interesting. That game has second half written all over it. I don't know if we're going to be here for the eight o'clock second half. So that game has second half written all over it. Uh, I kind of like DePaul here. I took him at plus one. Now, if, if, you know, wouldn't be surprised. It's not, you know, that's us. My numbers and my gut told me that there was a small edge there. Uh, DePaul's a team in general. I've been high on all year looking to bet on them. Seton Hall, of course, had some uh, some personnel issues. A lot of people faded them in their game against uh, against Maryland. Proved to be wrong, but they were at home in that situation. Uh, now they're going on the road against DePaul, a team with some real life to them this year. Kind of like DePaul at, uh, at plus one. I bet them. Not saying you should bet them. I'm saying that I did. Uh, let's see. Northern Arizona game. That's a tough one. I took a shot with the under. I got 141. I see now it's up to 142, so I might be on the wrong side of that one. But we talked about Northern Arizona this, uh, in other shows. First-year coach, some good life to them. Um, I don't really I, – I do expect them to uh, to continue to have some, some you know, sort of under-the-radar ATS value maybe going forward, but I don't like this spot for them. If you gave me a free play, yeah, I'd probably still throw it on Northern Arizona. But uh, – I took a shot with the under at 141. Markets moved. Uh, markets moved against me. Other plays that I took. Well, this might again. My number said Idaho State. I took Idaho State at plus seven and a half against Eastern Washington. But a lot of times you'll see like some home dog in that range where the numbers say it has some value, and the team like Eastern Washington goes on the road and wins by 20. And that is what my gut is telling me here. But my numbers said Idaho State at seven and a half, so I took a shot with that. It's down to seven, but again, it's you know that's kind of a, a line at this point in the season that that, that makes me nervous. Uh, let's see what else do we have. I did take Southern Illinois at plus eight, and that's now moved down to six. Again, that was just a situation where um, they were plus eight. The numbers just said that that was just a little off. I couldn't explain why the numbers were where they were. I looked for injuries and I didn't find any, uh, but. So I took a shot with Southern Illinois plus eight. I think that probably is a game that's more likely than not to go down to the wire. I also took a shot with Southern uh, Southern Miss at plus seven against Louisiana Tech. Now it's up to seven and a half. That might be the wrong side as well. But, you know, I'm not saying you should do it. I'm saying that I did it. You understand the difference? I'm not telling you that you should do it. I'm telling you that I did it. Right? Subtle difference there. Subtle but crucial difference. Uh, yeah, the Columbia game, I guess that was a 7 o'clock game. I, I like the under on that one. Took the over on the Elon game. I haven't even checked how the scores have gone. I took James Madison at plus 2.5. That's an interesting one. Delaware minus 2. Columbia game under, I like that one. All right. Let's, uh, let's look at some comments here. Look, I don't know, man. Jay Mills, Justin Casey, people asking about those games that I just mentioned. Uh, again, there's a reason why I'm giving official plays uh, publicly on second half stuff and not pregame stuff. And the reason is that I believe much more strongly and more confidently in my second half stuff, my halftime stuff, than in, uh, than in pregame stuff. But I'm happy to tell you what I did. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, and with, with my halftime plays, a lot of times I'll make some play or some bet and it'll – proved in the end to have been totally, totally wrong. And that's okay. That happens a lot more with the pregame lines with me than with the, uh, with the uh, halftime lines. So, you know, I know Idaho state is terrible. I just, my, my numbers said Idaho state plus seven and a half. What can I tell you? I, I don't think it's <laughs> my gut tells me that's horrible. Yeah. Jesse Daly, you're on a lot of those other side, a lot of those picks and you're probably right. <laughs> Dan Kelly says, Wiki says they use dihydroboldenone in livestock to make the meat taste here. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, we're all animals here, Dan Kelly. I mean, uh, Special K, you remember that party drug back in the 90s? Now it's being used for depression. That was like a horse tranquilizer or something. All these shits have different meat uses for other different animals and stuff. Uh, yeah, so shout out to you, Justin Casey. Listen, listen. My second half plays, if you're, if you're on the opposite side of it, uh, I would say you should be you should be a little concerned. 
pregame, psh, don't worry about it. You're as likely to be right as, as I am. I would say my pregame stuff is more likely to be right slightly than a coin flip. But compared to someone watching one of these shows who follows college basketball, psh, you're at least as likely to be right as me, probably slightly more likely to be right. So there you go. Uh, all right, so let's look at some other comments coming in. Then in a few minutes, I want to start just gazing at the halftime situations because there's certain games that I'm going to be, uh, you know, want to having the having the, the, the data uh, right up there immediately when there's 17 uh, games. You know, there's sort of – when there's this many halftime lines – there are certain lines that I sort of strategically, you know, I, I'm, I'm likely to miss a few. There's no way that I'll have enough time to get to all of them. So, um, you know, I want to be strategic about the ones that, that, that I make sure that I see and the ones that I am okay with if I miss. All right. So, yeah. Shout out to you. Shout out to Dom Ricci. Shout out to Dan Kelly. Ah. Shout out to everyone. Yeah, listen, the uh, you know when 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 uh, in general for this card there were not a lot of plays that I was liking pre-game, and that is usually bodes well for the halftime lines. You know, a lot of times when there's plays that I'm liking that are strong pre-game, I do tend to be relatively right on those, and that usually means with as with the Xavier game that that there's less likely to be a a, a halftime line. Uh, you know, as many uh, plays that I'm liking on the halftime lines as, as a normal card or a card where there's not that many pregame lines. So we'll see, you know, a lot of these lines have second half written all over it to me. A lot of these games, all these like Cleveland state, IUPUI type games, Youngstown state, UIC, those are all second half written all over it type games to my eye, Buffalo, St. Bonaventure. Those are, you know, Albany, Columbia, Delaware, Charleston, those are second half written all over it type games to me. New, uh, uh, Northeastern JMU. So we'll see. Not a lot of pregame lines that I'm liking. The only one that I would say that I'm liking, yeah, there's, uh, of, of the games that are coming up after 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock and on, there's really no pregame line that I'm really, uh, quote, unquote, like definitely liking. DePaul plus one, you know. I think they're going to win the game more likely than not. I like the spot for them. The numbers said to me, my numbers said they should be a very small favorite. Whoosh, so I'm liking that one. Idaho State, who knows? All those seven, seven and a half point home dogs. So treacherous in college basketball, you know? Southern Illinois. Yeah, nothing really that I'm loving from the uh, from the later games. Thank God it's no one's birthday today. All right, let's look at some other comments. And then let's start gazing at the, at the, at the halftime situations. Shout out to everyone. We few, we happy few. My name is Peter Loshak. Any book wants to sponsor this show, hit me up. If you don't want to sponsor it, that's fine. I totally understand. Blue FM, Pete, love your brother. I've shared with anyone who is that interested. That second half will be the new strategy, the future all live, my friend. Yes, Blue FM. I mean, live betting is the future of uh, of sports betting for sure. And who knows what 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 the future will bring? Uh, it's definitely going to be treacherous for sports books because if you have one of these, you know, the, like the right angle sports of live betting, and it might be him, you know, who knows who's going to be? But we, you know, in the future, when the Dr. Bob's the right angle sports is whatever, those guys uh, come up and have their and have their you know their 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 algorithms and their machine learning bullshit and all that stuff working well, it's going to be very hard for the books to handle you know 200, 300 people tailing someone with a legit sharp live betting spreadsheet or algorithm. Uh, and I don't know how the books are going to respond. I don't know how the markets are going to respond. It's going to be weird, wild, wacky stuff. That's for damn sure. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see. Chris Temple, live betting is becoming tougher. Yeah. I mean, I remember live betting like, you know, eight years ago when they would offer these soccer lines that were just way off. I do remember that. I didn't bet it, but I, I do remember it. Uh, okay, let's just look at some other comments. Make sure there's no great comments that I that I missed, and then uh, you know, start looking at the second half. Shout out to you, Nello I. Hmm. We few, we happy few. God, I hope I can maintain a positive record in this show. I got a positive double digit record. We so wonderful all through March. Chris Temple says, Bet365 is best. Well, yeah. Oh, we're not supposed to mention. Yes. 
I'll mention it once. Yes, Bet365 is very good for live. From now on, Beth, if anyone from Bet365 is watching, you want me to let everyone know that you're the best book for live betting, pay me. Other than that, when people ask me, like, I don't know. They're all good. They're all good for live betting. Okay. Dan Kelly said, like, live betting is much harder to get down on the good lines. Yes. Some books are making it, you know, it's definitely the lines. I know that some of the, uh, some of the, I know some people, like I said, pe no, people didn't pay attention, but I, 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 uh, I have an in at one of the leading uh, places that's doing live bet, innovative live betting software. And I talk to that guy all the time about, you know, where they're headed in the future, what their actions like. I can answer any question uh, any of you have about live betting behind the scenes where it's, you know, from a software perspective, from a booking perspective, from an, from a risk management perspective, from an action perspective, from a player profiling perspective. Uh, I have a guy who will answer any question I ask. And I already just confirmed. I was like, will you answer? He's like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right. Okay. Let's start looking at, uh, at, at what's going on in the second half here, just so that in five minutes when the lines start coming up, I'm ready to go and not scrambling with all of my sheets and whatever. Um, okay, let me put that over there, put that here. Okay. All right, so let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cleveland State, that's an interesting one. Northern Kentucky, that's an interesting one. JMU, interesting. Delaware, interesting. Drexel, a little interesting, but less so. Fordham, not super interesting. Georgia, not particularly interesting. Wright State, that may be interesting. We'll see. Buffalo, definitely interesting. Oklahoma, not so much. The Elon game, pretty interesting. UIC, Youngstown State, pretty interesting. The Yale game. I don't know. Not that interesting. That one, I had a very small... I didn't like Yale. I know everyone was like, oh, Yale, Yale, Yale. They've won a million games in a row, covered a million games in a row. UNC lost Wofford, this and that about UNC. I kind of like UNC at six and a half. Now it's down to six. And a, and a very small lean to the under as well. I didn't bet it, though. But I definitely wasn't all over Yale, as a lot of people uh, I saw were. But the people I saw all over Yale got a good number. So, you know, I saw everyone saying Yale seven and a half. Now it's down to six. I didn't touch that one. The Columbia game, interesting. Yes, low scoring as I expected. Yes, see, I gotta. I'll start my Patreon. That would be. That would have been the, probably my favorite play of the day with Columbia under. Um, all right, let me start pulling up some stuff here. Now we might be have just like dead air for twenty minutes and all just me like looking at numbers and shouting out plays. This is what I was afraid of. These uh, these seventeen game, uh, seven o'clock situations but that's okay Penn Howard I don't know about that one that's uh probably gonna be a pass let's see all right I just because I gotta pull up some stuff yeah I you know I, I guess uh I guess I implied that I might look into uh, getting some kind of entertainment I do have one thing let's all pray for that it happens I, I, I took I took a took a took a shot for the fences there's about a 0.05% chance it'll work out. I took a shot as far as providing entertainment value while we're doing what we're doing. And uh, all right, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta concentrate here a little bit. Gotta concentrate here a little bit. I'm gonna pull up, pull up some of these uh, games. I'm gonna make sure. The numbers, the stats. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a one half of one percent chance that there will be some awesome entertainment value in this show at some point in the future. One half of one percent. Hope it works. If 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 if, if I need so if I need to, maybe I'll make some kind of social media campaign to make the object of my uh, 
efforts say yes to put them over the edge. All right, let's see. What else do we have here? I'm just pulling up games here right now, and I'm eyeing, I'm eyeballing numbers because you know how this stuff goes, right? You got your, your models. Anyone who's ever modeled anything before, maybe this is just me, but you start to realize, you start to realize that, like, you know what the thing's going to spit out. Most of the time, like, you can predict what the thing's going to spit out within, like, a point because you've just seen it so many times, you know? Uh, so I can start eyeballing things and, and pretty much uh, pretty much know what it's, what it's likely to spit out. All right, I'm pulling stuff up. Okay. Oh, shit, there's one thing I forgot. All right, again, you might have to entertain yourselves for now. Talk amongst yourselves while I uh, – yeah, this is the show. You guys watching me, watching numbers, making decisions, betting, and then telling you not to do what I just did. That's what the show is. That's the premise of this show. And so far, it's working okay. It's not a sh complete shutout. I don't know if I would call it a hit, but uh, it's not a complete shutout. You watching me looking at numbers, making decisions based on those numbers, and then telling you not to do what I just did. But then after that, saying, okay, if you want to, go ahead. But I would advise against it. That's what this show is. All right, I'm looking for a halftime line to start coming up. Here we go, 17 games. Talk amongst yourselves, please. Entertain yourselves, if at all possible. Unfortunately, I can't put any music up because that would be a, a, a copyright violation. Otherwise, I would put some fucking sick riffs to, uh, to keep all of you entertained while I look at these numbers. Some fucking sick prog metal riffs, right? If that's what you're into, I have no idea what the hell you guys are into, but... Uh, I play. I I put up anything, yeah, whatever you want. Sick prog metal riffs, or anything else. Me personally, I like Mozart and Handel, but I would not play that for you. Don't worry. I would play whatever you want. Mumble rap. I know many of you love that, and that is. Fine, you know, I certainly would never judge anyone uh, for their musical taste. It's not, it's not my thing quite, but uh, I understand that some people like it, and that's fine. All right, I'm not seeing any lines coming up. I'm getting a little bit nervous. 7.44 Eastern time. Some of these games should have lines. James Madison. Oh, God. See, here we go. Now I really have to stop joking because I have to. Uh, I had a great Sunday. Zero pressure. Just gazing at the lines as they came up. No pressure at all. This is different. Trying to keep things entertaining here. I'm not seeing any line. Oh, here we go. All right, Columbia. Columbia line is up. Mm -hmm. Well, the numbers like the numbers like Columbia here, and uh, that will be a play. Columbia minus four. And it's definitely going to be a play. What can I tell you? Columbia minus four. Does the numbers say the numbers like in Columbia minus four? That is big or medium big graded. Big or medium big. And I will make that. Well, the numbers like it. The numbers like it. The numbers like it a lot. The numbers, halftime numbers like it a lot. Pre-game numbers like it just a very little. Actually, I had a slightly into Albany pregame, but uh, I didn't quite love the spot for the, the, the numbers. They love this halftime line. All right, not big. I'll make it great at medium big. Columbia minus four, medium big. 
That's an official play there. Does make me a little bit nervous. Someone, no, no one's injured for Columbia, are they? Nothing came up. Just make sure no one's injured for Columbia. Makes me a little nervous, but uh, Columbia minus four, medium big is an official play. Yeah, that guy Forrest is out for for, for Columbia, but I kind of knew that. I mean, I, I you know I knew that. Um, not great, but yeah. All right, what can I say? All right, I can't spend too much time on this one game. That's a play. Uh, all the Columbia minus four, medium big. Jesus. You know, as you you know, these plays will some of them will lose, right? You guys know that, right? Okay, total is a pass. All right, let's look at uh, some other stuff coming up. Columbia minus four, medium big. Bright State is up. Okay. Jesus. Hold on one second. Minus six and eighty, Milwaukee and Wright State. Hmm. God, I hate these fucking. Uh, this is one one area where my numbers uh, aren't good. These games with a super high scoring first half, numbers always love the under, and it's not a good. It's not a good. Uh, not a good bet. Like in Wisconsin, Milwaukee as well. Yeah, just a little bit. And Wright State team total under. They're liking that. All right, I'll make that a play. Wright State team total under 43. That is a play. Nothing crazy, but that will be a play. And that will be graded. Medium. Medium. That's borderline medium small. Graded medium. The numbers are liking the under here at 80. But I've seen this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. My numbers are just off on these kinds of situations, on these totals. Uh, all right, I'll do it anyway, even though it's... Uh, my gut tells me no, right state, under 80, medium, small. It's probably a loser, but I'll make that an official play. Under 80, medium, small. The number's also like Wisconsin-Milwaukee. It's now down to five and a half. Hmm. Yeah. Numbers like Wisconsin Milwaukee. It's now down to five and a half. I still haven't pulled the trigger on it. Missing that six is not good. 
They like it. Yeah, and I'll make that one in a bet and an official play as well. Just get it in there. Right state, five and a half, minus 110. I'm sorry, Wisconsin Milwaukee. Sorry, Wisconsin Milwaukee, plus five and a half, minus 110. Sorry, I hope I said that all correctly. Wisconsin Milwaukee, plus five and a half, minus 110. And that will be also medium small. That is borderline medium. Jesus, I'm starting to get nervous. This could be a disastrous night. I hope it's not. I hope you're having a good time. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. I hope you're entertained. I'm starting to get freaking nervous here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, let's see. Come on. Other lines. Where are we? Okay, let's look at Buffalo St. Bonaventure. Buffalo St. Bonaventure. Minus three and 78 I'm seeing. Wow. Damn. Halftime lines actually like St. Bonaventure. Pre-game lines like Buffalo. Mm. Halftime lines, halftime, halftime analysis is stronger. Oh God! See, if I'm alone in my room, just doing this by myself, there's zero pressure here. No pressure. Just do something. If it wins, great. If it loses, fine. Review it. Again, halftime analysis like St. Bonaventure. Pre-game analysis likes Buffalo. Uh, the total. Oh, God. I can't handle this. I can't handle this, man. Too much pressure. Doing this shit publicly, man. No play, no no official public play on St. Bonaventure, although the halftime lines like it. Man, I hope oh I hope when everything is said and done, this show winds up okay. I also like St. Bonaventure team total over at 37 and a half. Jeez. All right, let's look at other games. JMU and uh, and Northeastern. Let's look at that one. Where the hell is it? All right. JMU minus three and eighty. Okay. Mm hmm. Hmm. Numbers like JMU on the money money line. Let me just look at this quickly. Ugh. Oh boy. Numbers like JMU minus one eighty. I'm going to hold off on making that public for now, though. We're making that official, rather. Let's look at some other stuff. Elon, plus 3.5, 71.5. Let's look at that. Elon, plus 3.5, 71.5. Numbers like over. Hmm. 
Mm, the market is headed down, though. And the numbers like Elon a bit. Numbers like Elon a bit. And the Elon team total over a bit. But that line is crashing. I got burned giving Elon in a show recently. But I will uh, I'll make that a play here, official. Elon plus three and a half, that's an official play. Elon, God. plus three and a half. That's graded medium. That's an official play. Elon, plus three and a half, graded medium. Numbers also kind of like the over. And the team total over. All right, I'll make the Elon team total over 34, also an official play. That's graded medium small. Plus three and a half medium. Look at Delaware, plus one and 77. Delaware, plus. This is definitely much harder than doing it on my own. Just no pressure at home. Way harder. Way harder. Delaware, plus one and 77. See what the numbers say here. Nothing really. IUPUI minus 3 and 75. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. What do the numbers say here? They like IUPUI. They like IUPUI. All right. That'll be a play. IUPUI minus 3. Grade that one big. That's just what the numbers say. IUPUI minus 3 graded big. Against Cleveland State. Cleveland State, kind of a decent team this year, though. The numbers like IUPUI here. Pre-game likes it a little. Halftime likes it a lot. IUPUI minus three. That's graded big. And they like the uh, Cleveland State team total under as well. And we'll make that one an official play as well. Cleveland State under 36. That's an official play. Grade that one medium. That's medium, borderline, medium, big. They also a little bit like the under at 75, but we'll hold off. All right, so again, IUPUI minus three, graded big. Cleveland State team total under 36, graded uh, medium. What else do we have here? Uh, the Yale game is up. Illinois, Chicago, Youngstown State. Let's look at that. Illinois, Chicago, minus three and 73 and a half. Oh. Numbers don't really like anything here. Minus three and 73 and a half. I hope you can all hear me. I'm starting to get nervous and frustrated. This is much easier when I'm just alone. Zero pressure. Hmm. Yeah, pregame likes UIC, but halftime says pass. Let's look at uh, what else. Let's look at Wisconsin Green Bay, Northern uh, Northern Kentucky, and then let's look at Yale and Yale and uh, UNC. Let's look at that. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting.
Yeah, numbers kind of like UNC. The numbers like UNC at minus two or minus three. Right. Sorry. The money line. The numbers like the money line as well. The numbers like the money line as well. Can't give that one out officially, but the numbers definitely like UNC on the money line there. And nothing on the uh, total. Let's see. Drexel NC Wilmington. That looks interesting. Where is that one? Is that one still up? Hope this is entertaining. Somehow. See, I'm sharing my uh, thought processes here, even though I'm not necessarily making a bet. Where the hell the fuck is... Oh, my God. Sorry. Got a little bit lost here. This is ridiculous. Sorry. Just one second here. All right. <laughs> yeah, just hang on, hang on with me. Hang on with me. Oh, boy. What am I doing here? Yeah, that's a, nothing on that one. Green Bay, Northern Kentucky is off. Akron minus 376 and a half. All right, I'm definitely doing my best here, though. My absolute friggin' best. I'm trying here. This is much more, this is a much different ball game than doing it uh, at home, pressure free, or in the, in the, Yeah, the numbers like UMass a little bit at plus three, minus 115. Numbers like UMass a little bit at plus 115. All right, I'll make that one official play. Medium small. That'll be medium small as well. UMass plus three, minus 115. Medium small. There's another play. Medium small. Let's see. What else do we have? What's still up? UMass plus three, minus 115, medium, small. Let's quickly look at that Oklahoma game. That was an interesting one. I was thinking that uh, I like the under on that one. See what's up there. Oh, that one's all right. That one started. That one's off the board. Yep. 
yeah, I don't know if this show is gonna is is gonna be good long term. I hope it will be. You know, we're just uh, feeling our way around in the dark here, in life and everything. Dayton in North Florida, that's gonna be a that's just a pass. That game had uh, just that was just too wacky. North Florida shoots so much from three. Dayton so efficient offensively, but they also tend to be uh, you know lower scoring. All right, let me just see what else is still hanging here. Mm, nothing, I guess. Oh, Jesus. All right. So, Columbia, I hope that one cashes. IUPUI minus three. Hope that one cashes. The right state friggin' Wisconsin-Milwaukee game. Oh, man, that, that, that one was just a... Uh, Hope that was the right thing to do to take all those unders and Wisconsin Milwaukee. Elon plus three and a half. That was one where the edge wasn't big, but 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 the confidence level was high. Also, like the over in that one. And then again, plays that could have gone, you know, UNC minus 185. The Elon game over 71. JMU minus 180. It's not easy to beat these markets, right, everyone? It's not <laughs> let's see what's going on here. <laughs> oh god all right listen we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep doing this show for as long as as long as it's working as long as people seem to be enjoying themselves as long as we're all vaguely having fun i mean as long as you guys are having fun i have fun i have fun doing the show when the show when i'm not actually doing it but during the show it's just stressful as, as all hell because all so many of these plays are, are are so you know borderline, and when I'm by myself, it's fine, you know, because you can uh, you can be wrong and analyze why you were wrong, and you can have you know losing days and you know close wins, close losses, close calls. You look at your methodology, you look at the uh, body count at the end, and in general, you know what you're you know you know what you're doing, and uh, in well, there you go, William Mary is up. Worst case scenario, you've actually come up down. It's okay because you. Uh, you know, you gave it your best shot, and you did something you thought was uh, was was worth trying. You know, when you're giving plays publicly, it's just a whole other ball game. Damn UIC, yeah, they're uh, they're getting hit there. All right, let me close out all this stuff. Man, this stuff is stressful. Public plays, all in on public play syndrome is what I suffer from. Damn, this is stressful, man. Man, man, this is stressful. There you go. JMU is up. Yeah. Well, not looking great. Ah, the Coppin State game, man. We didn't get to look at. I didn't get. I missed that one. Might have taken Coppin State on that one. The Georgia Austin P game. That's an interesting one. That almost certainly would have been a pass. Columbia winning. That's nice to see. You see how this stuff goes. So this is what we do, right? I tell you my thought process is as best as I possibly can while I'm doing it. I'm definitely more gun shy by an order of magnitude when I'm giving out plays publicly than I am when I'm just, uh, 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 you know, by myself doing it alone. It's still fun to do a show though. I enjoy all this stuff. I love all of you. Uh, all right. So that's about it. I mean, we can hang around for another 35 minutes and wait till the 8 o'clock games. There's like eight of those coming up. But I don't know if we want to do that. Shout out to Flipper13. IUP. Oh, look at that. Chris Temple. IU <laughs> IUPUI getting crushed. Yeah, listen. Listen, and a little of the losses are going to come. And as I said from the very, very beginning, not only are the losses are going to come, but the huge embarrassing losses, hopefully there's not too many of them, but they'll be there too. They'll be there too. You know what I'm saying? How bad is it? IUPUI getting crushed? How bad is it? Is it bad? Let me see where it is. So this is this is what sports betting is. 
You know what I'm saying? This is the, the lines are the lines are sharp because they have count uh, a countless parade of nerds with spreadsheets making these lines super sharp. Even small markets like this. IUPUI is getting crushed. Is that what you just said? Let's see what's going on there. IUPUI is getting crushed. Are they? I'm seeing them down by two. Maybe you're seeing something else. I don't know. Yeah, I'm seeing them down by two. I don't know. I don't know. Max is weird says I love this show. You see, I just got to find some way because I feel I, I just love doing the freaking show. It's I love doing the show. I love doing picks by myself. I just hate fucking doing giving picks publicly. And having other people like, you know, fucking and then and then the more the picks do well, the more the pressure goes up because then people are like, oh, my God. Where's the savior of the month this month? The capping savior of the month. Oh, it's Lo. Oh, it's this guy Peter Lojak. Who's that? Let, let me. Here, here we go. I found my capping savior of the month for this month. Then when it turns out I'm not the capping savior of the month, I'm just another guy with some opinions that might be have a slight edge on a market somewhere. Then all of a sudden, some guy who uh, who you know, a good-hearted person who just didn't quite understand. We all want to believe, right? We're all looking for a savior. Me too. I'm looking for a savior. You know what I mean? I'm susceptible to it also. I just don't want to be the guy. You can make a lot of money being a false savior. And yeah, I, I need money. But I can't do it. I can't be a can't be a false savior. Uh okay, so let's see. Let's see what else do we have there. All right, shout out to everyone. Uh yeah, I don't know how long this uh this uh, this show is gonna keep going. Yes, Robbie Tagaloa, always bet size appropriately. Yes, definitely. Uh, and I guess that's it. You know, the 8 o'clock games, I mean, I can tell you right now that, uh, yes, the Vanderbilt game has second half written all over it. Valpo has second half written all over it. DePaul Seton Hall, definitely second half written all over it. Uh, and if there's anything I'm really loving or liking, I will uh, tweet it out. But let's not let's not beat a dead horse, shall we? I don't, know, I don't think we should just hang around here for another 30 minutes just to get these uh, however many 8 o'clock games there are. It's like six or eight. What are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Seton Hall's at 8.30 anyway. Okay. That's it for the show. Gave out a bunch of plays. Hopefully, overall, I can report an overall winning day. Hope you had fun. And uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure what we're going to do because tomorrow there's like games throughout the day. There's like two or three seven o'clock games. Try to do a show, although those shows are always fun for me to do. A couple of second seven o'clock games because I can really dig into them and uh, and uh, you know give out like one play and go one and zero on the day and say mission accomplished. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll we'll do it. We'll do a show tomorrow. We'll do a show tomorrow. That's uh, just a look at some, some comments here, <laughs> and uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Eric Jacquet, thanks for sharing your work. Shout out to you, Sean B. Later, Pete. Thanks. Shout out to you, Deer Slayer Ski. Shout out to you, Shaw Small Thrill. Shout out to you, Nello I. Hell yeah. Shout out to you, Shaft. Looking forward to the next show. Alex Ramirez. Shout out to you, Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly. Shout out to you, Joe M. Justin Casey, Max is weird, Flipper13, shout out to you, Flipper13, you missed the losing day on Friday, although it wasn't really a losing day because uh, I gave out a bunch of NFL Week 17 picks, which I had a feeling were going to be uh, positive, so I'm happy that I was able to share those, and I will definitely share, uh, you know, anything that uh, in other sports that comes up, and those usually, you know, if I if I like them enough to share them in a show like this or talk about them, it's usually because, you know, I have good reason to, but um, that's shout out to Tito Banton. Didn't get to shout out to you in the show, Chris Comatini, and that's it. I will uh, see you all tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.